One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe it's not too late. Together we can change the world. I don't care if you remember a song that I teach you, but if you can be a better human being for being in this class, that's what I feel is something that I've given to society. Music has a way of bringing people together, and sometimes it's hard to just tell people a message, and it's a lot easier to just sing them the message. There's nothing that stops that woman. It's pretty astounding and very exciting to be a part of any project that she does. We can change the world. Funding for more than just the music is provided by Connie Merkins, Friends of the Lincoln High School Choir, the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008, and by the members of Prairie Public. Two, ready, and step, bump, step, bump, bump, deca, step, bump, bump. Step up, up, up. You're not doing what I'm doing. You are. Watch. Watch what I'm doing. Watch my arms. Pa, 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 pa. What is Darcy Reese? That's my cool. She's a. She's a. She's a love. You know, it's just, it's everywhere. She doesn't let them or me or anybody get away with, with nothing. You do that. Find your cool. One and two. Darcy is just a ball of energy herself. I got a little thing in there. I don't know how she does it. I don't, I don't know what medication she's on. But I need to get some. That's all I can say. <laughs> Move your hips. Stop. Move your hips. Stop. There's a saying, though she be small, she be mighty or something like that. And that is definitely Darcy. And set. And set. <clears throat> You're never going to do this on stage like that. So if you can do this, you can do all the little things that I want. Ready? One, two, ready, and boom. Just an amazing woman. Great gifts. I love the work that she does with her choir there. Who killed the mood? Sorry, but this is all I want right here. This is all I want. My name is Darcy Reese, and we are at Lincoln High School in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. My position is the vocal choir director. Up from ourselves and look to the hills, for you are our help. So when people think of a choir class, they often will think about Ready? just and. coming, singing a song. I mean, you learn songs, you learn different maybe music from different parts of the world or classical things, whatever. A lot of times that's kind of what choirs maybe had been even here before. But Darcy really wanted to change that. She wanted it to be something more than just the music. Those people are coming to that concert that night to hear a message from kids that make a difference. Do you understand? Are you sure? Yes. All right, here we go. Ready? She saw that like we can make an impact with our music. We can tell a story with our music. We can do more than just sing. Being in this choir is not for the faint of heart. It's a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot of physical work. I mean, those kids will practice for eight hours today. Is that all you got? Uh, it's, it's emotional work because they tackle tough conversations and they confront, you know, maybe biases and prejudices that they didn't even know they had. And, and so there's a lot of, of demand, but I think that they're willing to do it because they see the end product and I think success breeds success and kids are willing to work hard when the product they put out is they know it's going to be good and so they're willing to work hard and they're willing to work hard for her. I really don't care if they ever remember a song that they sing with the choir. I want them to remember what they learned in here about being a human being that is caring, that is kind, that is loving, that is accepting um, and respectful of all people. I love Darcy for being that kind of person. It only starts with one, but don't be ashamed to stand up.
and be that one. We're not going to take this anymore. We have to be the change that we want to see. And sometimes we look at the world as just this big picture, and it is. But if we can start with just ourselves, if we can start with doing something ourselves, and someone else can do something for themselves, that's how we can make this world a better place. Won't be quiet anymore. Not unless they're here as loud and clear. Damage can't be undone. Let's not pretend it disappears. We need a change. Or some amazing grace. Let's go step by step and break by. Some of our concerts include our December concert, which is traditional choral music, not necessarily Christmas, but it's traditional choral music. And our May concert is social issues. We, no we talk we about diversity, we talk about civil rights. And I shouldn't say talk. We sing, we perform, we, and in the performance we're talking about um, vocal performance, we're talking about poetry, visual art, and we tie all these things together about humanity. It's, it's a concert in, of humanity, and we incorporate a lot of different art forms to bring that to life. And brick by brick, I'll carry the way for you. May concerts have been going on since 2000-2001. We collaborated with Jeannie and Steve that year um, and really that's kind of where the journey of everything she's doing started. They brought poetry of the children from Terrazine into vocal pieces. And I fell in love with that, and we started building these concerts that were then about issues that had to do with history and issues that had to do with empathy and with social injustice, and it just took off from there. Jeannie, my wife, is an extraordinary musician, composer, uh, arranger, conductor, she, in, in 2001, uh, was a recipient of a grant through McPhail Center for Music in downtown Minneapolis. And she went up north to Thief River Falls uh, to work with their uh, students in music composition. It was a, a wonderful time being an artist in residence, and you went in never knowing what to expect. So when I went to Thief River, I thought, you know, this is going to be great. This will be fun. I've heard really great things, but I had no idea. So I called Steve, my husband, within the first week. When Jeannie is excited, not only does her voice go up about a fourth, but also her southern accent comes back because she's originally from Alabama. And I said, baby, I, we have the choir, we have the chorus to sing butterfly songs. A high school choir? No, I, they can't do this. But they did. They used the texts of poetry that children who were imprisoned in Terezin concentration camp uh, near Prague, uh, the Czech Republic, uh, had written while they were imprisoned there. And many of the children that wrote these poems were of the high school age. The music written by Jeannie Barnett from the book I Never Saw Another Butterfly and to have music set to words written by children that were imprisoned at this time. It was really life-changing and impacted me a lot. The way that I composed them is in a classical jazz format, which is the way that I write. And we had wanted to record butterfly songs for a long time and just could not find the right ensemble. 
because you need that youthfulness, but you need uh, the skill. I mean, because they are not easy, and you need that depth of empathy and compassion. And you need that point person that has attention to detail like nobody, like Darcy has. The project was titled Never Again, and we were able to perform that show basically, or those songs in several different locations. We even recorded those songs. Within a year, we were at Minnesota Public Radio. We recorded the whole song cycle with her choir, with soloists from her choir, so that was my first time to produce uh, the choir. And Steve worked with them just as he would any professional. I didn't stint. I produced them as if they're a professional choir. And I expected that, those kinds of results because by that time I had seen what Darcy can do and uh, what her choir sounded like and what they were able to do musically. So we pushed them and the recording came out just beautifully. Deep River Falls is a predominantly white Christian community of 8,000 people. And the high school here is, it ranges between 700 to 825 students. Some of the topics that we discuss with the students and myself are topics definitely that are um, not necessarily talked about in our small community. It's challenging to bring it to the forefront, but I have the support of my principal, my superintendent, uh, the school board. As a parent, you know, of someone who's in the choir, I'm happy that they're tackling these issues because we live in a place where there's not a lot of diversity. So I think sometimes it's even more important to uh, talk about it. The community's response to what we do in May has changed since 2001. Good job. I think in 2001, when we did the, it was called Never Again, and that was the Holocaust. I think a lot of people were like, oh, what? It, what, where, what happened to just singing a few songs, calling it good, and going home, um, and saying goodbye to your seniors, and that was that. Um, and I changed it every year after that. Then it went into the African American culture. Then we brought them together. We would talk about women's rights sometimes, and we would talk about the LGBTQ community, that one was, that was a shocker. That was probably the biggest one that the community was like, mm, set back on. I'm sure that some decided that they probably weren't gonna come back again, but it generated conversation. I remember early on thinking, wow, how does she, how is she able to get away with some of the things that she's, she's doing? Um, not that they were negative, they were, they were good things, but you could see they were maybe going farther than the public would maybe want to hear, but always pushing a good narrative. Like a beautiful rainbow at the end of a storm, we are the youth of America, letting our true colors shine through. People are still, I think, digesting and kind of marinating on all the different things that we that we talk about. And the, one of the most beautiful things about it is when my students come back and they say, we had a family discussion about this last night. My family was very supportive in, in me being in choir and the messages that we were discussing at that time. And the big thing was the Holocaust and hate and what hate can lead to. And I do remember just discussions about, you know, respect and treating others, how you want to be treated and treating everyone as humans. I'm not looking to change people. I'm, I'm looking at my students and our audience to, to be open to change, be open to change, be open to the reality that the world is changing all the time. And if we stay the same, there's going to be turmoil forever. Peace is, you know, that, that old saying, you know, everybody wants world peace. It's not that far out there. 
it's really not that far out there. You just got to get down to the basics. They were taught they could change the world, and I think they believe they can, and they are as, you know, one person at a time. I had the privilege of meeting a gentleman by the name of Dr. Horace Clarence Boyer back in 2002 at the World Choral Symposium in Minneapolis. I happened to sit in on a session with Dr. Horace Clarence Boyer. Who is one of the greats in terms of historical knowledge, let alone style, in terms of gospel, spirituals. Now, I appreciate all genres, but I fell in love with black gospel music. Gospel in and of itself, yes, is a message, but music is bigger than that. And so we're taking a message and we're just surrounding it by all kinds of styles. We're, we got a little jazz, we got a little blues, we got a little pop, we got a little classical, we've got all of these things around a message. And that's kind of like what black gospel is. It's a lot of different stuff that are influencing and, and riding along with this message that's just a positive message about us learning how to love each other. It became something that I immersed myself in, not knowing how to teach it, not knowing how to conduct it. When I left his session that day, he gave me a card. He didn't know me from anybody, but he inspired me so much that I wrote on the back of the card, he will come to my choir one day. Two years later, I had the courage to call Dr. Boyer, his number was on there, and left a long voice message and explained to him, I was gonna create a curriculum on African-American history, African-American music, dance, and art. That's a big feat for somebody that didn't necessarily know a lot about it, other than I, I enjoyed it, I liked it, I felt a connection to it. And he called me back and the first thing he asked me was, where do you live? And, I, and he was out in Connecticut. And I said, northern Minnesota, close to the Canadian border. And he said, and how many black students do you have in your choir? And I said, one. And he said, I need to come up yes, there I for that one. Because I think it's very important for students, particularly in areas where there are no, no uh, Asians or African Americans or Native Americans to get to know people because it's so much better when you know someone than getting it from TV and television. Our show that we did with Dr. Boyer, um, we actually performed it in a high school in Harlem, and we were very nervous about this, like how are we gonna be received by an all pretty much African American community when this whole group of Northern Minnesota white kids are coming in and singing their music. I feel like Darcy was just kinda like, you know what, it's just gonna work. It's gonna be okay. And we just had to trust her, and it really was. Darcy is catching these kids at a really good age where they can enjoy the experience and feel good about the experience of just hearing something and being able to sing it. The biggest thing about the experience of learning black gospel music is the fact that we do most of what we do wrote which means I sing a part and you emulate what I'm trying to sing. You emulate it in the voice, not, not an octave lower, in the same register. I learned how to conduct black gospel music from Robert Robinson. Now let's get lively in the house. For about 20 years, I was the founder, executive, and artistic director for the Twin Cities Community Gospel Choir. And we had offices on the north side of Minneapolis. I was sitting in my office, and I got a phone call from Darcy. I didn't know who she was, never heard of her before. And she started telling me all about this program, and, and I, I was hooked when I, I got there. I was totally, totally hooked. The kids responded really well. They had, they were excited. Um, they were a little nervous in the beginning, but by the time it was 
we were ready to do the show, their energy was unbelievable. I was tired and they dragged me along. Anybody in here tonight who believes that the Lord will make a way? I feel like I could crowd surf sometimes because the adrenaline is going so much and it's just, it's just, you know, feeling the spirit just take you over and just go with it. So Dr. Boyer was huge in, in setting the foundation for what it is that I had no idea was to come. cut our own CD at Skywalker Ranch in California. Do you need it one more time or shall we do it from the top? Yeah, let's do it one more time from the top. Yeah. All right, stand by. One of the things that George Lucas did was get the marketing money for the original Star Wars. He was very smart. He was able to build one of the finest studios in the world and not just for recording, but also for post-production for film. Big studio can house probably 200 people comfortably. Skywalker was our stepping stone to be able to produce a top-notch recording of the type of music that we do at our May concerts. For two days, uh, we recorded it like we would a professional uh, uh, recording. So we recorded the rhythm tracks first and then overdubbed, brought in the choir, brought in the soloists, and they would sing to the, the, the rhythm track and that's exactly how it's done in, in a real professional situation. We wanted to give them the experience of doing it the way it should be done if you're going to go to a professional studio. So we thought, well, we got 60 kids. They're all going to be have, have to be using headphones to hear the sound. And I thought, oh, God, are they going to do that? Are they going to be able to, to, to handle that kind of thing? Of course. They're used to having headphones or they're having, used to having a playback. These kids are like professionals. We had some soloists, some extraordinary soloists, and they held their own. They know the style, they know how to produce the music, and, and the results are, are just knockout performances. We are and we will discover there is no need to fear each other. Audacity of Hope is one of the songs uh, on the CD and it's also the title, title of the CD. And it's a real, it's an ironic uh, uh, title. How can you have audacity to have hope in a world like this? And it's, the kids bring it and they sing it. <laughs> and they make sure that you understand that they do, they represent the hope of the world. The population of my high school choir ranges anywhere from 130 to 160 kids. I think that Darcy has a unique relationship with her students because she has them for so many years. And for some of these students, she's had them for six years. So you build a lot of trust there that, that maybe some other teachers aren't afforded because they, they may see a student one or two years. It's almost like she's one of their family members. Um, the kids can relate to her. Um, they talk to her in a way to where they trust her. I can tell that they love her. And I feel like those things are very important when building a team because the team needs to know that they can trust that you're going to take them where they want to go. And they do with her. I remember going to choir concerts when I was in middle school and just thought, wow, that's amazing. I want to be a part of that. It grew into something much more than just coming in and singing. Together we can change the world. When you enter ninth grade, 
you are eligible to be in this class, which is an elective, which is bel canto. It's made up of ninth and 10th graders. 10th grade students, again, a lot of them will go from ninth grade right into 10th grade and be in the choir and stay with it. Um, so there's no audition process there, and they are all ninth and 10th graders. If you wanna go on to my concert choir, which is the, that's the choir that tours, that's the choir that goes on the major trips and did the Skywalker recording opportunity. A little bit more powerful with your prayer. You need to audition. So those students will audition the end of their 10th grade year. And once they get in as a junior, they're in as long as they want to be a part of it. It is clear our world is still in need of healing and will continue to be until we transition from a foundation of hate to a foundation of humanity. When I audition my kids for choir, I am only looking for singing, but things come out of the woodwork as they're in here. All of a sudden I realize, oh my heavens, I have great instrumentalists in here. I have great writers in here. I have awesome speech students that are in here. And I have phenomenal dancers that are in here. And all of a sudden, the show just evolves based on the talent that these, these students have. Society paints a very specific picture and tries to force conformity, but when that image directly conflicts with the color of someone's skin or the shape of their nose or the hair that grows out of their own head, what is left to feel but out of place? What is left to feel but insecure? Normal is a Darcy feels that it's very important to expose her students to not only professional musicians, great music, but people who, uh, in a sense, bring something that the kids may not have had exposure to. In this specific concert, Woven Voices, Woven Threads, she brought together a, a Native American, a wonderful black uh, gentleman, uh, Dr. Boyer, and she brought me up as a Jewish person. As representatives of three very different cultures, American Indian, African American, and Jew. There were so many similarities. There, I mean, there are so many similarities between the African American culture, the American Indian culture, and the Jewish history. She said, you know, come and give, give, the, give the history of the Jewish people to the kids in an hour. Uh, uh, which was a little on the challenging side, and of course I, I droned on much longer than I should have. When I finished talking, they were just, you know, the crowd's up, why is this way, or what happened here, or what should we do, how can we make it better? And that's just so typical of, of what Darcy has instilled with her students, that it's the, the thirst for knowledge, and the, the, the need to make connections, and the need to, to try and improve the world. Fabulous musicians from Red Lake, which is only miles away from here. One of their historians came and spoke to my students. The very definition of people is founded on being connected. The one thing that was really interesting was that there was a bridge that some of my American Indian friends said was finally starting to be built between Thief River Falls and Red Lake because of the project that we did, which I thought was absolutely beautiful. It was a wonderful, again, integration of three extraordinarily different styles finding a way to work, work together. I really truly believe that change is, is, is doable by a small amount of people. This movement, T period, H period, I period, S period, this movement, this standing for the hero inside shines. And so what these students give into the show in May is that we, they're the heroes and we want everybody to look at themselves as a hero and shine and shine with kindness, shine with empathy, shine with um, respect for others. Don't you be afraid. The quote that the kids have, we refuse to let the world be as it is. That is the key working line of the This Movement project. The kids are saying, we refuse. We refuse to let people be unkind. 
How dare you take civil rights away? How dare you not be a good humanitarian? I feel like it's really, and for all the students who've come through since, opened our eyes to maybe the things that we have, things we need to be maybe more grateful for, um, but also just to open our eyes to the human condition around the world. Like, what are people going through? You don't have to understand, but to respect other people and their ways, whether it's their gender or, or whatever their belief system is with that. And the other line is we will do it one note at a time until our world can be a better place for everybody. Colorful future, where skin don't define any human. I think she's bringing to their attention the fact that, number one, you don't want to be an instrument in this earth that says one thing and lives another. And secondly, by singing this, by talking about this, which is something that they do in rehearsal, it really kind of brings it all home for them that this has got to be something that I walk out. Even now in my high school years, I got to figure out how to be nice to people. I gotta figure out how to love myself. I gotta figure out how to not give up on myself. I gotta figure out how to not give up on people that I really don't wanna be bothered with. I mean, there's all of this that is encompassed in the kind of music that they are, have done over the years. And, and I feel like that is definitely the, the way to go. The work in this choir is kind of emotionally taxing sometimes. They don't just learn music, they also have really hard conversations, they, they confront one another on issues, they act more like a family and sometimes families fight and sometimes you know they don't get along but then they forgive and they move forward. I have 10 students that are on a production committee. These are the kids that want to go the extra mile, that will take an hour and a half um, every other week to sit down and discuss these issues. How do we incorporate it into? What do you think about this? Where do we want to go with getting our message across? I think the purpose of the production committee is to take um, everything that we do not completely out of the hands of Reese, but to just give the students a say in what we get to talk about and what we get to sing. Like breaking barriers, building a foundation. This is not a Reese production. This is our production. This is our project. This is our journey. You choose to come and be a part of our journey by coming to our concert. I got an idea on it. Yeah. So Elise had the title, Breaking Barriers, Building a Foundation of Humanity. If humanity is the title, the foundation is all those things we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> we come out with a bunch of um, like hate and love and all those things, but we mainly focus on the ones that are affecting us like at home and around the world. Topics are student driven. We talk about what issues do we want to tackle this time. And, and, and again, always it's about acceptance or respect. I think the overall message always comes back to love and acceptance and treating people equally and maybe not understanding. You don't have to understand why someone is this way or but you have to love them no matter what and not spew hatred we're helping each other and not standing against each other some of my proudest moments of being a teacher is when these young people can sit and discuss tough issues and agree to disagree and be open-minded to it pause sometimes sit back realize that you don't have the say on the whole table Yep, that's the point that she brought up, and I thought that it was very valid. Ideas are shot down because we are thinking of what could be better, not because of a dislike or a, even a disagreement. And at the end, we've made some decisions. That's huge. These kids can take that with them for the rest of their life and use it, I hope, in a lot of different areas.
it opened my mind so much and it it made me who I am today. It's it's amazing and I thank Reese and my choir family, my fellow students, because they they accept me just the way I am and I accept them just the way they are. Darcy has um, an amazing music program. They are receptive in trying something new. They are respectful. They understand the basics of music more than any other school program that I've ever worked with. Darcy's created a culture amongst her kids where they truly want to be invested in what they're doing and she starts that with them as sixth graders. She integrates music. She teaches the kids music theory. Uh, they learn to sing properly. They all sing correctly. She believes in getting quality, professional musicians to work with her students so that they have those high expectations and experience. And then Elise, tell me in the microphone if it's too fast or too slow right away, and then so we can get the tempo right. An experience for these kids here to have professionals coming in to work with them. The idea that somebody can do this for a living or that somebody is a professional is even that that's even possible is a, already a spark or a seed for thinking down the line. Are we ready? The artists have been a huge part of what we do because um, I don't want to worry about do I have players that can handle what we're doing. The players add to what the kids already have worked on for eight months and the players come in and just put it together. Or the string part comes in. Do you yeah. want us to follow that exactly or do you want us to? She just doesn't play any games. She takes no shorts. She expects the best out of them. Um, one of her favorite sayings to the kids are, you're better than this, you're not average, you know? And to hear someone say that, you know, to let them know like, hey, you know, that's good, but that's only average, you can do better. There's more to you, push harder, like to really pull the best out of them. Can you make it better? You got two more times. Being in, in choir is hard, and I want my kids to have to work hard at stuff. I want them to have to work hard and then see the, 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 the product that can come from that and see the growth that can come from that. When you put in the time and you put in the effort and you put in the energy, this wonderful thing can happen. Out of the ruins and rubble Out of the smoke To get into the choir was special in the first place. And then uh, what she brought to the Choir, what uh, what she taught in the choir, um, the humanity aspect, the the caring about other cultures, all the things that you wouldn't see in a in a normal classroom. Uh, my my kids uh, just benefited greatly from it. We can build a beautiful city. Yes, we can. Back when. I was in the choir, I mean, really, a lot of what we were looking at then was more um, cultural and I would say less topical. And I, I feel like that's evolved over the years into more than just like, hey, this is what these people went through. Now it's like the whole topic of hate in general. We may not reach the ending, but we can start. We're living in a world that is very, you know, we're, we're polarized where there's people that we're hateful, we're, we're angry, you know, there's a lot of issues just with that. And I think teaching tolerance, teaching acceptance, caring, loving, not hating, I think those are important things to shape the future, you know, of, these students that walk in the doors, they're the future of America, they're the future of our world. Yes, we can. As they've grown older and, and gone on with their lives, the things that I see about them that I assume is with many of the other kids that went through there um, is, is that they don't put up with um, negatives in society. And prejudice bothers them and they're not afraid to tell people um, that, you know, it's wrong and, and they, they embrace all humans and, and it's just very, 
uh, very comforting as a as a parent to know that these are things that were instilled in that choir. Give up bitter and battered, or you can slowly start to be. a beautiful city yes we can yes we can the fact that my my kids have been in this choir and all along for the for the last many years the kids that have been in our choir this is just it's normal for them to to work this hard and attain this much and to have these opportunities um, and to be able to go to these venues and I think that sometimes they begin to feel like it's a normal thing and I just want them to know that it's not. Uh, there aren't a lot of kids that get to perform at Carnegie Hall or Lincoln Center or Skywalker Ranch. And for that, I hope that they realize the, the, the impact that, that this choir ha has had in their lives. And they, they might not realize it just yet, but someday they will. It's always a challenge to find um, the dollars that it takes to do what we do. Every year, the May concert because my artists are professionals and I don't use them. Um, they get paid what their artist fees are. Welcome to the Northland. With the artist fees, that comes their fee, hotels, food, transportation, especially when they're coming. Some of them drive, some of them fly in from New York, from New Jersey. I am kind of tired. I just got here. It's a challenge to find the funds, but I think what I have that has made it easier is number one, I've been here for 32 years, and number two, the community knows the project at the end. We really do support the arts. We want a whole student, a well-rounded student, so um, we're supportive in, of athletics and, and activities and the arts and of them all working together. I have awesome, awesome support in this, in this town that they will come and say, where are you at this year? What are your needs? Last year, I had one of my fathers of an alum who is now a grandfather of one of my students donate $10,000 because he said, where do you want to go with your middle school curriculum? And I said, I'd love to incorporate this, and I'd love to incorporate that. And he said, let's do it. There's different fundraising opportunities that take place. We can sell raffle tickets or things like that. Last year we did a telethon where people could call in their donations. There are people like me that don't like to do a lot of fundraising, so just I end up just kind of making monthly payments. And she makes it really easy. At the beginning of the year, you know, she figures out how much the trip is going to be, and then we, we do have, we have a little payment book so that it doesn't have to hit you so hard all at one time. Because these, these things that we do are not cheap. I remember the first time uh, we received a letter in the mail that says, I'm Darcy Reese, we are planning on this uh, monster deal, we're going to wherever we're going at that particular first time, and it was like $2,300, and I thought, well, are you crazy? The more we can take the burden off the families and off the students um, with financial donations through the community or things like that, the, the, the better it is. I think that trust factor that the community has with me, they might not agree with everything that I do, but maybe the trust factor that they know it's for the kids, what's best for the kids. From seeing it as a parent, from, from being in, uh, just experiencing the choir concerts, from being with on their tour, uh, I have to say that it is one of the best spent dollars I've, I've had as, as far as seeing what you get on the other end, and, and what, uh, how that's helped and changed and made the people that my children have become. Uh, very, very much worth every single dollar. This isn't a curriculum that is exclusive to Lincoln High School and to my students. Anybody can do this, and I truly feel, if I've done my job well, get this last chord, it will go out to other teachers. Go right into it! I know I could never begin to tackle a project like this. I think the idea is great that, you know, we're teaching more than just the music. We're teaching 
life skills. We're teaching tolerance. We're teaching acceptance. We're teaching humanity. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Right up, ready, go, girls, go. I may not do a project like this, but I will teach these life skills not to hate, be accepting of one another, be human. I think we have a very unique situation on our hands. We have a director who is well-connected, uh, who has more confidence than anybody I've ever met. Don't go high on that, boys! I think she just kind of exudes confidence and you just trust her then. She just has no fear in going out and approaching people and then telling them about what she does and getting them excited about it. And the balls come a tumbling down. She gives an idea and you're like, wow, we can do that. You know, we can make that happen. We can make a difference. Do you want a voice? And I guarantee you, your kids knowing that they have that power to do that will take your programs to a whole nother level. kind of a circular thing when you have someone who kids are willing to work for they're willing to put in the time and then the director keeps putting that effort right back into them so it works really well and then add that to a, a supportive community and school culture and you have kind of a perfect combination you got that the community that Darcy works in trusts Darcy which is a wonderful thing um, so because they trust her they're willing to go out on a limb and they allow her to do the fundraising she needs to do. They've seen the product. The concerts have proven, have spoken for themselves. Emulating that means, number one, the nucleus behind all of it is a person like Darcy. I want you to find a space on the floor right now. Who is a never say die, never say quit. I'm going to make this happen. If the leadership Oh, or the nucleus of those, those communities, those school community choirs, doesn't have that kind of spirit, it won't work. Walk with your voice! <laughs> to go forward and say this dies as Darcy moves on, uh, I don't think that's fair to, to the kids, uh, future kids here or anywhere else. The bottom line is that you're doing this for the kids. You're doing this for the world. You're doing this for their future. If anybody's going to change anything, it's our kids. And if we don't grab them at this age and or younger, when is anything ever going to change? New energy. I think it can be done. I hope for future students here and everywhere else that people try. How's everybody doing today? Yeah. I remember meeting her and seeing what she provided for her students, the relationships that she built with them, the sound that she produced from them. Um, all the students looked at like, like they had an amazing time with her, and I wanted to recreate that here in the Twin Cities area. And there was no other place that I thought to do it at other than the high school that I graduated from, which is Patrick Henry High School. And here I am, five years later, absolutely modeling after what Darcy is doing. Well, the scope of our concerts has been, as far as where we perform, it has been Thief River Falls, obviously, Minneapolis, um, Chicago, New York City many times, to Jazz at Lincoln Center, to Alice Tully Hall in Lincoln Center. And now this year we're going to incorporate bringing in another school with us. We have this amazing opportunity with my good friend Darcy Reese in Thief River Falls. We're going to do this huge concert there, and we're going to be singing an original song. Okay. We are going to be traveling to Minneapolis to work with the Patrick Henry High School Concert Choir. In January, their choir is going to come here, and um, we're going to rehearse with them. Then they are actually going to be coming up here, and here's the kicker. And then in May, we're going to put it all together and it's gonna be so dope. Y'all excited? Yeah. 
we talk a lot in this class about being diverse and wanting to be equal among all. And the fact that we get to find someone from a different demographic and be able to work with them is just mind blowing to me. Patrick Henry High School became involved with our project because of their choir director. My name is Cortland Pickens and we're at Patrick Henry High School. I'm considered the artist in resident um, here at the school, so I teach the choir. I met Cortland, I don't know, maybe five, six years ago. He was one of the singers that we would bring up here from Minneapolis with Darnell Davis and the Remnant. After a couple of times of um, us going to Thief River Falls, I felt so inspired by the work that Darcy was doing. And once I started to um, work at Patrick Henry High School, I knew instantly, like, I have to connect with Darcy. Like, we need to have both choirs meet and we need to do something big together. It's time, it's time we put this together. And um, because we have quite the diversity from his choir to my choir, um, we're gonna put us all together and, and bring the issues to light. If you are perfect, you can't grow, you can't prosper, you can't go past the limit you already see as perfect. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, I love that. If you're perfect, you can't grow. A lot of their stories are a lot similar to the students' stories that I have here. A lot of things to do with families and personal things that they go through. And that's why I think it's so important to um, have those messages shine because those topics resonates with the students and um, it's things that they're going through. We're going to sing pieces together that um, actually Darnell Davis is writing um, one of the pieces that's going to kind of tie us together. So she gave me some, some um, just some statements and some lines that the uh, students had given. We took those words and we just began to just kind of like come up with something and we came up with the song Let's Come Together. We'll teach you the melody and then we'll put the parts around it and go from there. Let's come together. Yeah. Learn from each other. My sister, my brother. We're better. And it talks about coming together, breaking down barriers, standing together in unity, loving one another. And break down barriers. I'm looking forward to hearing the sound just from the inner city and the rural, and it just coming together and just hearing how it sounds. We taught it today and it was great. The kids were, they sounded, they sounded amazing. <laughs> they sounded great. So um, the song is all about unity. It's all about coming together. It's all about loving one another. And that's really what we need today in this world. We really need love, unity, and peace. It's really like a dream, um, not only for our choirs to come together, but for Darcy and I to come together and actually do an explosive concert. I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. I can already see it. To see the final result each year, it's like, wow. We start this process, you know, where we're teaching and learning the songs and um, we go through all this and then to stand up and watch the, the response of the audience. Connecting with people in the audience, like you know, seeing people being moved to tears, myself being moved to tears, and feeling that, that uh, raw, visceral, internal, emotional experience is, it's a magical thing. And it's, it's a thing that, a connection that's really, really special. You cannot help but, but have tears at the end of her, her program or even during the program. I've never seen anything like it. She is unique. The strength of the young people that she works with, they're instilled with the kind of background that you need to get along in this world and to make a difference.
fact that they're getting the confidence, in addition to the love and the acceptance and everything that was going on tonight was really special. I am so grateful, so blessed to be a part of this creation that, yeah, I may have started it, but it took on its own life. Mm, I love you. Love you too. And I hope that when I'm gone, I hope that parts of it can continue, but I will treasure this for the rest of my life. And um, if I never came back, even tomorrow, I would know that I've done everything that I possibly could and have been become a better person because of it. To order a DVD copy of more than just the music, visit our online store at shopprairiepublic.org or call 1-800-359-6900. Funding for more than just the music is provided by Connie Merkins, Friends of the Lincoln High School Choir, the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008 and by the members of Prairie Public.